Hi, I'm Robin Ford, and you're watching ForGuitarPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching ForGuitarPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today on location from The Ark in Ann Arbor, Michigan with one of my favorite longtime artists, Mr. Robin Ford. How are you, Robin? Hey, good. Glad to be here. It's so nice to meet you in person. I've been listening to your music for so long, and I almost don't know where to start. With everything that you've done, you're from California, all the stuff you did with your brothers mm -hmm. and with the Yellow Jackets and, and with Joni Mitchell and Tom Scott and the L.A. Express and yeah. Miles Davis all and all Yeah, I bet. Well, tell me, I, I want to work up to the current tour, the new record, and, and some other stuff, but okay. tell me about the beginning. I know you had a band with your brothers, which you named for your father, which I always thought was a very beautiful thing to do. Yeah. But tell me about your initial exposure to music and how you became a guitar player. Well, my family, everybody loved music. Uh, both my parents were music musicians. Uh, my father professional as a young man, very young man. But... Uh, and my mother never professional really, you know, but she had a nice voice and played the piano. And my father had a, a cool voice and uh, played acoustic guitar. And um, so there was a lot of music around the house and all of us gravitated towards an instrument. You know, I first gravitated toward the saxophone oh, and uh, then moved to the guitar uh, about three years later. Kept the saxophone up, but the guitar really became obviously a the better choice for me. And my older brother Patrick was already playing drums and younger brother Mark started playing blues harmonica and the Paul Butterfield Blues Band was our favorite band and so we were basically trying to do that, you know, that uh, Chicago blues thing but with that integrated band, you know. Uh, had I heard Muddy Waters at that time, I don't know that I would have gotten it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of required, I think, for someone like myself, with for us, you know, to have white guys in the band up front, you know, you could identify a little bit better. <laughs> and, um, but the, the rhythm section was so strong, you know, uh, it wouldn't have been the same, you know, without Sam Lay and uh, the other guys. So uh, we wanted to be that, we wanted to do that. And, um, and from there, you know, just a love of music, you know, over the years, I uh, really wanted to find out more and more about jazz and um, so jazz and blues was kind of my thing uh, as an instrumentalist. I was never a rock guitar player, you know, as a young man. And um, so uh, I didn't really know how to broaden my musical world or even necessarily want to until I joined uh, Joni Mitchell, the LA Express, and uh, those guys just opened me up to, you know, all kinds of music. You were with her for a couple of years, weren't you? Yeah, 74, uh, 5, 6. Okay. Yeah. There, there's so many things I could ask you with career highlights, but uh, and Yellow Jackets. I have another site called ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten to know Jimmy Haslip pretty well. I've interviewed him a few mm -hmm. times. And I've interviewed a couple of your bass players, Travis Carlton uh -huh. and Brian Allen. Uh -huh. So I feel like I know you already. Mm. But there's, there's one period, I know it was a short period, but I've just got to ask you uh -huh. about Miles Davis. Tell me, uh -huh. that was only about six months or so, but tell me yes. about that experience. Start with the phone call. Well, uh, yes, um, it was Jimmy Haslip indeed, and you probably know this uh, from Jim. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Jim was the one who actually called me to say that Miles Davis was, quote, looking for me, you know. Um, actually, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, he was making the, the Tutu album. Oh, okay. uh, Mike Stern had yeah. left... And um, Tommy Lupuma was the producer of the 2-2 record. And Tommy, um, Miles asked Tommy uh, if he had any idea for a guitar player. And Tommy had produced the Yellow Jackets, indeed. So he recommended me, played him some recordings. He said, I'll take him. <laughs> so um, Tommy called Jimmy Haslip, the bassist for the Yellow Jackets, uh, uh, for my number. And Jimmy said, oh, you got to let me call Robin, you know. So Jimmy calls me and says, hey, Rob, Miles is looking for you, you know, like that. I'm like, what? It was just such a shock. And uh, he gave me Tommy LaPuma's number. I called Tommy. Tommy said, so you want to do it? 
And I said, yeah. Yeah. And he goes, okay, I think Miles is over at the studio. I'll call him and I'll have him call you. I'm like, holy mackerel. So three days went by, no phone call. Finally, it was him. My wife answered the phone and said, hey, Robin, it's Miles Davis. She said, I just turned beet red. And uh, so he just goes, Robin, what you doing out there? You know, like, oh, nothing, you know. <laughs> and he goes, well, you want to play with me? And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, here's Jim. And he gave me his tour manager, and that was it. Ten days later, I was on a red-eye flight to Washington, D.C. Played my first show, meeting the band in the lobby. And uh, it was a co-bill with B.B. King. Who was in Miles' band at that time that you played with? Well, uh, his nephew, uh, Vincent Wilburn, was on drums. Um, Felton Cruz, from, bassist from Chicago. Uh, a keyboard player was Robert Irving. All three of those guys were from Chicago. Robert Irving the third, right? Yes, I think so. And um, Adam Holtzman, oh, okay. keyboard player. Right, right, I remember that generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, Bob Berg on tenor saxophone. Uh, and Thornton, Stevie Thornton on percussion, and Marilyn Mazur, some name like that. I can't. I never felt like I even had it right then. Marilyn Mazur, I think, a percussionist uh, woman from, uh, uh, she was from uh, Holland. Wow. That, that is a, uh, it's got to be an incredible experience, unforgettable experience, having played with Miles. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was the seminal experience uh, uh, of my life. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed it as much as, you know, like working with Joni Mitchell, that two-year period. I learned so much during that two years. Uh, it, it was just wonderful. And I was you know, around wonderful people making wonderful music that I'd never made before. Miles Davis was sort of like a confirmation. You know, like it was like knighthood or something. You know, I joined the round table when I joined Miles Davis, you know. So it was like it made me, uh, it gave me a confidence boost, you know. And I was fairly confident already, but I was 35 and uh, 33. 34 right in there yeah. and um but you know like and he loved my playing and he let me know it in no uncertain terms so that must have been early 80s right because 86 man, oh really that okay 85 86 because i saw him with uh schofield and daryl jones and al foster that was i guess that was a little early it would have been probably 83 a little later probably 85 i think down in florida and then i think so no i don't think so Possible. Oh, okay. possible. Possible, <laughs> certainly possible. Yeah. Well, I didn't come to argue with you about when I saw Miles, so that's not important. Quite I did. Right. I did see him about a month before he died, though, in Detroit yeah. on, on Shane Park with with Foley and uh, yeah. Kenny Garrett, and uh, wow. Uh, and I love the stuff you did with the Yellow Jackets. I think a lot of people, they were so prolific for so long that a lot of people may not even realize that the early days, you know, Imperial Strut, that's you. Those yeah. early days with Jimmy Haslip. Yeah, I'd rather talk about more current things yes. now. No, I, I just mentioned that time. just because, yeah. Well, tell me, you're, you're on tour. You've got a new record coming out. Tell me what's going on and tell the people what you'd like them to know. Well, uh, I am, uh, I, I've moved to Nashville. And which has been a wonderful, uh, was a great idea. That's the smartest decision I've made in many, many years, honestly, because it's uh, just an incredibly rich and supportive uh, musical community. I, I can't say enough about how it's just a perfect fit, you know, surprisingly. And uh, so um, I, my group, uh, which you're seeing tonight, you know, uh, are all uh, living in Nashville. Uh, the, uh, the drummer is currently, excuse me, uh, he actually lives in Memphis. He's not our usual drummer um, who does indeed live in Nashville, but uh, he's great. <laughs> but uh, we cut the record in Nashville um, with this very group. And um, what's the record called? Record's called Purple House. Uh, that's the name of the studio right. where we recorded. And the record comes out the end of October. It's going to be a little while. Um, and we will start touring it in Europe end of October. And so uh, this is something uh, that uh, it's a very unique record for me. Very different record. 
and uh, I'm excited about that. I really just have a ball with this group. You know, this is a new group for me. It's only about a year old, and we've done very little touring, actually, uh, during that year because uh, of making a record, for one thing. And uh, well, We're so happy that right, Michigan is part of that tour. Yeah, well, we're, well, I wish we had the record with us, but not quite yet. So you have to come back. Oh, certainly. And uh, so um, this is a wonderful thing, very happy about. Uh, but also, uh, the move to Nashville was largely, I would say, so that I could get off the road uh, in the coming years, do less of it, and have an environment where I'm enriched, you know, and where I can do productive and different things. You know, I, I like recording. Uh, I, I'm... I'm producing records now. I like writing. I like playing with, you know, other talent where it's not like we have to get married, you know, like a band, you know. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have your experience together doing whatever it is you do and you move on, you know. So uh, just a much more open kind of musical life with my feet on the ground. That's why I moved to Nashville and it's working out really wonderfully, you know. And a I lot less touring in my future. And I see it growing and a lot of people moving to Nashville from L.A. and from everywhere else. So Amazing. It's All over the world, you know, people are coming. Tell me very briefly about your gear. Well, I'm using the same amp that I've used since 1983, which is the Dumble Overdrive Special. Uh -huh. And um, I'm currently playing primarily Les Pauls. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the Les Paul that people think of, but I also have uh, a 53 with P90s in it and a trapeze bridge. So that's a little less traditional. Uh, people almost shy away from them other than just to own them because they're single coil pickups, wh which can be noisy. People don't like that so much. And also the, the, the bridge and, uh, and tailpiece are, are kind of funky. It's not as easy to play as the traditional Les Paul. So, uh, but... I have uh, one of those guitars, which I absolutely love, and I've got a, a 54 conversion, wow. which it's an old guitar, old parts, but I turned it into uh, a humbucking pickup guitar with a stop tailpiece and, uh, and, a, and a traditional Les Paul bridge. And it has actual, real uh, 50s PAFs in it, and it just sounds fantastic. So the Les Paul has really been my thing lately. I mean, I, I, would, I would like to just travel with one Les Paul uh, with humbucking pickups. And I'm almost there. Yeah, did I see that you're a, a Seymour Duncan artist also? Um, I'm not a Seymour Duncan artist per se. Uh, years ago, I used Seymour's pickups in, my, in the Robin Ford Fender model, ah, okay. the Esprit. I used uh, Seymour's pickups, and he makes great pickups. I had a, a couple of his pickups in my... Uh, I had a 63 SG that were really nice, uh, but I no longer have that guitar. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm really vintage. Yeah, it sounds like it. What kind of strings do you use? I use Diodario 10 through 46. Okay. Uh, heavy gauge pick, traditional kind of turtle shell, triangular, uh, heavy gauge pick. And... Uh, that's about it. Be sure to let us know when the record comes out, and we will let all these people know. Okay. I do have one more question for you. Sure. What would you be, if you can imagine, if you were not a guitar player? Something outside of music. Something outside of music? Yeah. Uh, I probably would have gotten uh, into, like, um, I, I practice meditation. I'm, I'm Buddhist. Uh, I spiritual tradition and uh, I, I like yoga and uh, I never got into martial arts because I wanted to protect my stuff yeah. you know uh, I think I would have kind of gone that way maybe taught it you know what I mean like yeah. get good enough so that you could teach and make a living at it you know that would kind of be my bent uh, I like to think that I would have potential uh, other artistic abilities but I can't draw for nothing <laughs> So I, I couldn't paint. <laughs> I love art. What can I say? You know. Uh, and beyond that, I like, you know, uh, st the study of of spiritual traditions and and the yoga of your body. Like you know, we, we have so much potential as human beings. As everybody knows, you know, we use like eight percent of our brain. Yeah. Come on, man, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Right. You actually can use the whole thing. Wow. <laughs> it's been done. Yeah. 
So uh, that interests me. And, I think yeah. you opened it up for a follow-up interview. Maybe we'll get together okay. again and do well, it. Well, congratulations on everything. I have 9% going hey, next time. I hey, see. that's better than 8. <laughs> we'll, we'll watch for the new record. On location from Thank the you. Ark in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with one of my guitar heroes, music heroes, Robin Ford. I'm John Liebman. You're watching 4GuitarPlayersOnly.com. Thank you. Thank you.